In this video, we'll do an example in which we'll calculate the mass of a solute in a saturated solution, given its KSP. Here's an example problem. A 200 milliliter sample of saturated copper 2 iodate, CuIO32, is evaporated to dryness. We're asked to find the mass of the solid residue. The residue consists of the solute, CuIO32, that was dissolved in the saturated solution. We'll create an overall plan for this problem. The first thing we do is we look up the KSP of copper 2 iodate and use it to determine the molar solubility. The molar solubility of CuIO32 is just equal to its concentration in a saturated solution. So once we have this concentration, we convert it to moles and then to mass in grams. In order to determine the molar solubility, we need to know the KSP value for copper 2 iodate. Since it wasn't given in the problem, we need to look it up. We find it on the solubility product constants page in the BC Chemistry data booklet. We see that it's 6.9 times 10 to the negative eighth. So we'll make a note of that up here. We start by writing the solubility equilibrium equation for copper 2 iodate. We represent the molar solubility of copper 2 iodate by the letter S. The mole ratio of Cu2 plus to the compound CuIO32 is 1 to 1, so the concentration of Cu2 plus in a saturated solution is equal to S. The mole ratio of IO3 minus to the compound is 2 to 1, so the concentration of IO3 minus in a saturated solution of copper 2 iodate is equal to 2S. The KSP expression for copper 2 iodate is the concentration of Cu2 plus times the concentration of IO3 minus squared. The concentration of Cu2 plus is equal to S, so we substitute S in for the concentration of Cu2 plus, like this. And the concentration of IO3 minus is equal to 2S, so we substitute 2S in for the concentration of iodate in the KSP expression, like this. Keep in mind the concentration of IO3 minus in the KSP expression is squared, and the concentration of IO3 minus is 2S, so the 2S is all squared. Now we'll proceed to solve for the molar solubility S. Because AB all squared is equal to A squared times B squared, 2S all squared is equal to 2 squared times S squared. 2 squared times S squared is equal to 4S squared. So we write 4S squared in here. Because S times S squared is equal to S cubed, KSP is equal to 4S cubed. We solve for S cubed by dividing each side of the equation by 4. So S cubed is equal to KSP over 4. In order to solve for S, we need to take the cube root of both sides of this equation. Taking the cube root of both sides gives us S is equal to the cube root of the fraction KSP over 4. Now we can substitute the value of KSP, 6.9 times 10 to the negative 8, into this expression, right here. So we have S is equal to the cube root of the fraction 6.9 times 10 to the negative 8 divided by 4. So we divide 6.9 times 10 to the negative 8 by 4. And we get S is equal to the cube root of 1.725 times 10 to the negative 8. So to solve for S, we take the cube root of 1.725 times 10 to the negative 8. And we get S, which is the molar solubility, is equal to 2.58 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. Notice that we have one more significant figure than the given KSP, which has two significant figures. So if this was a final answer, we'd need to round this to two significant figures. Because this is only the first step in a multi-step problem, we show the value with one extra significant figure. This is standard practice in multi-step problems. We'll make a note of the molar solubility up here. The question asks us to find the mass of the solid residue. The residue is the CuIO32 that's left in the beaker after evaporation. This is the mass of the CuIO32 that was dissolved in the 200 milliliter sample of the saturated CuIO32 solution. In order to calculate this, we use a couple of conversions. 
The molarity of the solution is just equal to the molar solubility. We take the molarity and convert it to moles. Then we take the moles and convert it to the mass in grams. We start by expressing the molar solubility or molarity of CuIO32 as 2.58 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of CuIO32 per liter. Remember moles is equal to molarity times liters, so we multiply by liters. The volume of the solution is 200 milliliters. We convert the 200 milliliters to liters by multiplying by 1 liter over 1000 milliliters. This gives us 0.2 liters. If we stopped here, we could calculate moles. However, what we'll do is multiply by another conversion factor, which will give us grams. This conversion factor is the molar mass of CuIO32. By adding up the atomic masses on the periodic table, we get 413.3 grams of CuIO32 per mole. At this point, we can see how units can be canceled. We can cancel out moles of CuIO32 and liters, leaving us with the unit grams of CuIO32, which is the correct unit for what we want to calculate, the mass in grams. In order to calculate the mass of CuIO32 in grams, we multiply the numbers 2.58 times 10 to the negative 3 times 0.2 times 413.3. This comes out to 0.213 grams. However, since the KSP was only given to two significant figures, the answer must be expressed as only two significant figures, or 0.21 grams of CuIO32. Because solid CuIO32 is the solid residue left after evaporating, the final answer is the mass of the solid residue is 0.21 grams of CuIO32. Mm -hmm.